So the other day I was listening to Billie Eilish's newest release, Happier Than Ever, and as I sat in my intellectual chair, I had what one might call an intellectual thought. Hmm. You, you know, this reminds me of something, I pondered intellectually. The honest, open vulnerability, lyrics that depict the sad reality of an unhealthy relationship, the thoughts of uncertainty towards the future and feelings of longing for one's old life that inevitably accompany a quick rise to fame, the blonde bangs and sad head tilt on the album cover with the title in the top left corner. I'm sure you can already see where I'm going with this, but if for some reason you missed it, it's blue. I'm, I'm talking about blue. While there are some parts that bear resemblance, most of the similarities in musical style are pretty far and in between, but regardless, the seed had been planted in my mind, and it got me thinking. Saying Blue is a great album would be an understatement. It has a certain quality that makes it everlasting. Years after hearing it for the first time, I still get chills listening to the sentimental crooning on a case of you or the powerful yet subdued title ballad Blue. Something about it just hits me in a specific way that no other album can replicate. So you might be wondering, what keeps this album so popular after so many decades? What makes it so special that 50 years after its release, many critics and acclaimed musicians still consider it to be one of the best albums of all time? Well, dear viewer, I'm glad you asked. Hi, let's sing out with the students of the University of Manitoba in Winnipeg. We got Featuring Joni Anderson. Before we get into the album itself, it's important to acknowledge the events and milestones that led up to its conception. Blue is first and foremost an amalgamation of Joni's personal struggles through love, loss, and grappling with her own son's stardom. By the time the 1970s rolled around, Joni had been through a lot, and she had learned to overcome her suffering through her art. Even Joni's signature alternate tunings and guitar style began as an attempt to make playing more comfortable for her left hand, which had been weakened by a childhood struggle with polio. Divorce and heartbreak had led Joni to write songs like Both Sides Now and I Had a King. And when she was forced to put her daughter up for adoption, Little Green had helped her process the experience in a therapeutic way. While all these things only made Joni stronger, there were other hurdles to come that would bring her to her lowest point. It wasn't so good. And uh, so he, he criticized me for being happy. And, and that's what I think my songs are. I can't explain it any more than that. They're just, um, even the sad songs are, aren't depressing. They're just sort of wistful. Have you always been happy? I try to be. <laughs> no, nobody's happy all the time. In the song for Free, Joni sings, Now I say if you have Joni contemplates her newfound fame and the adoration and fortunes that come with it. She recognizes that she has become a product to be marketed and sold to large audiences for a price. But this man on the corner plays for free and no matter how good he sounds, no one gives him a second glance. This revelation about fame and celebrity worship began to gnaw away at Joni until she came to resent her own popularity and success. Psychological descent coincided, ironically, with my ascent into the public eye. They were putting me on a pedestal and I was wobbling. And when it all reached a boiling point, Joni called it quits and decided to take some time away from the crazy scene. Yellow Taxi, Both Sides Now, and Woodstock had shown listeners that Joni had a lot to say and wasn't afraid to say it. But in June of 1971, she was about to reveal the truth about her own life and current mental state, whether listeners were ready for it or not. And if there was any one word that could describe Joni Mitchell at the start of the 1970s, it was blue. So, you know, I took it upon myself that since I was a public voice and was subject to this kind of weird worship, that they should know who they were worshiping. While Joni's first three albums were played on mostly guitar and piano, this album opens with Joni's first introduction of a dulcimer in her music, a twangy Appalachian string instrument whose distinct sound would help the album stand out sonically. On the opening track, Joni vocalizes her yearning for adventure, love, and simply wanting to live in every sense of the word. From the exciting heart-racing moments to the small mundane tasks, 
Joni wants it all, and she wants to share it with someone. She wants a love that will bring out the best in her, and this setup at the beginning of the album puts everything out on the table from the start. These themes of craving emotional connection and the freedom to do as she pleases are explored throughout the album in a very revealing and at some points painful way. All I Want is followed by one of the more lighthearted songs on the album, My Old Man, which was written for Graham Nash of Crosby, Stills & Nash. The two had a very close connection, and after their breakup, Joni still recalls their time together with a sense of fond nostalgia and wistfulness. Even though he brings her so much joy, she's dependent on him for her own happiness, and without him that lonely blue feeling returns. Joni's rejection of the piece of paper from the city hall would also lead to turmoil in the relationship. As I mentioned previously, Joni wrote Little Green for her daughter who she was forced to give up for adoption. While it may at first glance seem like a song engulfed with metaphors and fantasy, the lyrics are some of the most sincere and open Joni has ever written. In college, Joni met Brad McMath and soon became pregnant. While it seemed at first that Brad would do the traditional thing and help raise the child, he ended up taking off and leaving a pregnant Joni to face childbirth alone. Because she was young and not making enough money to support herself and a child, she knew giving her up was the right thing to do for the sake of the child's well-being. In the chorus, Joni paints a hopeful picture of her daughter's future, like a reassurance that even though Joni won't be there to look after her, she will get to experience the joy and excitement of a normal childhood. The B-side of the album starts with a fun, upbeat ode to the state of California. In her signature fashion, Joni is able to capture the spirit of California and what it means to those who grew up there, despite having lived in Canada for most of her life. Joni also recalls her time with Carrie again. Carrie Raditz was a man that Joni met on vacation in Greece. At the Mermaid Cafe, the two hit it off, and the second verse, as well as the song Carrie, on the A-side, detailed the adventures and good times that they had together in Europe. But even on the happier songs on the album, Joni continues to return to this state of blue despair, which is often a cycle many people with depression fall into. Joni wonders if people, the listener, will still want her once the naked truth is out. Will people still take her strung out on another man, or will the honesty of blue be too much for listeners to handle? On the song River, Joni's need to escape from the fame she has grown to resent is palpable. The song samples the notorious Christmas song Jingle Bells, but while Jingle Bells is often a song of celebration and joy, when Joni plays the notes, they take on a much more melancholy connotation. She sings about how she lost the love of her life because of the sadness that surrounds her, and how her dysfunction eventually drove them apart. She blames herself for the breakdown of the relationship in another verse with the line, I made my baby say goodbye. While the relationship depicted in All I Want is more one of mutual dysfunction, Joni admits fault this time. At the tail end of the record, we get a case of you, one of the highlights of the album and one of Joni's most popular tunes. Joni sings with a boisterous voice while strumming the dulcimer roughly in a way that demands attention as she sings the national anthem of her homeland, Canada, like a bar fly at last call. Just like wine, the song is a bittersweet ode to her former lover and close friend Leonard Cohen. Joni admired Cohen's poetic writing style and used some of his lines in the first verse, I am as constant as a northern star, from the Shakespeare play Julius Caesar, which led to some tensions between the two of them. While Cohen felt that Joni had ripped off his material, Joni simply pointed out that if Cohen could use lyrics from other writers, she too had every right to use them in her own songs. A stark contrast to the hopefulness of the first track, All I Want, the closing track, Last Time I Saw Richard, is Joni at her saddest and most hopeless. The chords at the start of the song mimic those of the happier romantic song, My Old Man, but in a minor key, which sets up the gloomy backdrop. There is a deep sadness in her voice as Joni tells the story of Richard, a cynic who ends up marrying a figure skater despite his general animosity towards love and romance. Joni sees no glamour in domestic life and describes it as dull, mundane, and downright depressing. 
At the start of the song, Joni is the romantic who calls out Richard on his disillusionment, romanticizing some pain in his head. But by the end, Richard ends up married, and Joni herself becomes the cynic. Once a dreamer, now a lost, lonely soul searching for a dark cocoon. There's no feel-good message, no everything will be okay in the end. Just Joni blowing out the candle and hiding behind a bottle in a dark cafe. I remember the first time I ever listened to Blue. I was a junior in high school, and when I heard the soulful voice coming out of my speakers, I was transfixed. I related to the themes of wanting an escape from a mundane life and the freedom to decide my own future, as many high schoolers do. Since then, I've found myself coming back to this album again, each time something in my life knocks me down, and the album has been a comfort through so many moments. I think that's part of what makes it so timeless. While it speaks to Joni's personal experience, it's written in a way that everyone can relate to and can be applied to almost any situation that leaves you feeling lost and alone. Whether it's your first heartbreak, a sudden unwanted change in your life, Blue perfectly encompasses that blue feeling. No matter what the cause is, everyone at one point or another has felt those same intense emotions. And Blue is a masterpiece of self-reflection and musical therapy. I'd love to hear in the comments what you guys think of the album and what effect it's had on you personally. And if you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about Joni and her incredible life, I would highly suggest the documentary Woman of Heart and Mind and David Yeff's book Reckless Daughter. I referred to both of them while doing research and they give a lot of insight into Joni's creative process and journey as an artist. Thanks for watching and uh, subscribe. Yeah.